All right, here we are live. Welcome in, ladies and gentlemen, to the Empire Podcast. This is episode three. Uh, I want to thank everyone for the kind feedback we've had on the first couple of episodes. And uh, yeah, we'll keep the ball rolling with uh, some more phenomenal guests. Pretty excited for today's interview and uh, who I'm going to get on to chat in a moment. Uh, so going to be probably a little bit of a different episode to the first couple because uh, a little bit less familiar with our guests than uh, both Speaker and Sedia, who we interviewed in the first two episodes, uh, but I'm very excited for our conversation nonetheless. For those who haven't tuned in before, what we're doing on these podcasts is I'm just bringing on experienced, accomplished traders, getting them to share a little bit about their stories and uh, learn some things that they picked up along the way with a real focus on the psychology side of things and what makes up a successful trader. So with that out of the way, I'll just introduce our first guest. Uh, so this guy, um, he's been in the Empire community for quite a long time and someone who I've admired from afar. Uh, he's a very unique and interesting guy. Um, I say that because uh, from everything that I can see, he lives a very unique lifestyle and has a very unique uh, trading approach. Um, so for those who don't know, uh, Carlin Bull, uh, he is someone who lives in Bali, Indonesia, he lives on his own terms. He really embodies that independence that I think we all strive for as traders, that um, fighting for your own independent lifestyle. And uh, it's something that I think when you do trading well, it's a, it's a powerful thing to be able to live life on your own terms, to be able to do what you want when you want to do it, to be able to be who you want to be in this world that um, is so uh, often trying to control everything about you and what you do. So very powerful lifestyle this guy lives. And uh, the other component of him that I find really interesting and want to unpack today in our conversation is uh, his unique trading approach. Uh, for those who aren't in the Empire community, uh, you'll see that we see this guy virtually every single day just posting like ridiculous trades uh, that most people would dream of. These are, uh, you know, crazy p and 1,000, 2,000 ROI on trades. Uh, for the regular trader, these are not normal things. And uh, this guy does it with such a frequency, such a consistency that it's not, you know, that trade that, one in 50 trade that, you know, someone gets and it just, they, they let it ride forever. And it's such a lucky win. No, this guy, uh, from what I can see, this is all intentional. It's part of his trading strategy. It's a unique approach that he's refined and it works well for him. And uh, the results kind of speak for themselves. So uh, yeah, that's an uh, introduction out of the way. Uh, Colin, thank you so much for jumping on, mate, and having a chat with me. How you going, mate? Yeah, good, man. How are you? Oh, well, thank you. Well, thank you. So, uh, yeah, I want to have a good conversation with you today about your journey, things you've learned along the way, and just kind of who you are as a crypto trader and also who you are as an individual and what components of you make up you as a successful trader. So hope you uh, are willing to share as much as you, you can today with us. Yeah, sure thing. Yeah, and uh, I know this is... Uh, but for those who don't know Carly, he kind of stays out of the limelight. So this is not something that he does on the, the regular. So, um, yeah, really grateful for you giving us only the time. You guys, only for Empire. Only for Empire, exactly. And um, I'm a little bit the same, to be honest. I, I try and stay out of the, the limelight as much as I can. But um, the guys at Empire, they, they, they really push me to kind of do stuff like this. And um, I do it for Empire because I think it's such a great community. Yeah, me too. That's why we're here. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, so let's get stuck into things. Uh, won't waste too much time on introductions because we seem to be going quite overboard on the last couple of episodes we did. So, Carlin, um, tell us a bit about your your, your history, right? So I want to know kind of like how long you've been trading and just uh, how you got into the trading space, what drew your initial interest into trading in the financial markets? Okay, well, started back in probably 2016. was just doing Forex just pretty much gold, gold and oil. I was trading mm -hmm. that. Everyone in 2017 was talking about crypto. And I came across um, ETH, everyone was saying, take a look at this. It was about $144 at the time. And I charted it up, I looked at it, and this is just before everything went nuts. And I'm like, all right, I'll get an entry, a bit under $100. And that, it never came back. So I was sitting there. <laughs> And I watched this thing go parabolic and 
that's what sort of had me hooked then. I'm like, yeah, gold and oil is fun, but look at crypto. So, yeah, first got into it back then. Not trading so much, but I was just buying, you know, the hype of 2017 and, yeah, made, made a bit of money and uh, learned a bit along the way. I wasn't an experienced trader back then, but, you know, I was still learning my way and working out what I wanted to do. Thought, you know, back then buying and holding was a way to get rich and, you know, make a bit of money. But I think I was too late in 2017 already. But yeah, that's where I came from. And then pretty much was hooked on crypto after that and been through a fair few or well, a couple of bull markets now. Long bear market that we're just getting through. <laughs> And yeah, I I decided I ain't leaving the space. Yeah, well, um, it's uh interesting, you know, you talk about like you got started in gold and oil and then um got in Ethereum at 400. You look at the price of gold today, it's probably sitting similar to 2016. But as we talk today, Ethereum I think is about 3400 um USD. So um, the 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 move to crypto is probably the right one from the sounds of oh, it. Most definitely, yeah. Like it's, it's like the wild west, and I just I love the volatility in it. Yeah, yeah. I I that's literally the the main attraction to crypto over other markets to me is that volatility. Um, some people hate it, but it's what brings opportunity in my eyes. Exactly, and that's why I look at it like crypto is just one big pot of money. We know these cycles come around, money comes into it. And when, once you've got the knowledge and you can understand when to get in and when, when to get out, it's very lucrative. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, you've clearly been a, a beneficiary of technical analysis and, and what that can bring you in, in financial markets and in crypto. And um, obviously, like you, you, you know, your first couple of trades in crypto um, probably weren't based too heavily on technicals. Looking back in retrospect, but um, now you you clearly have like a pretty refined trading strategy that serves you quite well. Um, so, how did you kind of develop yourself as a as a trader and learn technical analysis in the early days? Um, how'd you go about all of that? Well, to be honest, like 2017, 18 back in that MBA days, my Bitcoin account. <laughs> I've seen those guys posting up numbers and I'm like, I got to do this. But back then I had a bit of an ego and I'm like, oh, fuck, I don't need to pay for pay for this. I can learn everything I want off the internet. Just just that ego of no everything's available. But that's <clears> the problem <throat> with the internet. You don't know what to believe or what's right or what's wrong. And I probably wasted two two bull markets learning well, well, buying and accumulating, but um, yeah, wasted two bull markets when I could have sped this up by having the right, pretty much the right um, teachers and the right mentors to show you the right way. And it's one thing that I stress to all the new guys starting out, it's about having good fundamentals. Like what I do is very different it's not in in the course, but it's about working out your own trading strategy. And yeah, it's pretty much what I stress. Fundamentals is the key. And I found it all. I was with MBA for a bit just before the Elevate, but then um, trusted um, Maddie when he said, uh, I'm doing my own thing. And I'm like, yeah, I'm following you guys all the way. And it's just grown from strength to strength with Empire. Yeah, awesome. Well, um, yeah, but honestly, my, my story kind of mirrors a lot of that is, you know, following on from the NBA days and um, then kind of sticking through the not so great times. Um, kind of, I felt like I had my hand yeah. on Vicar's shoulder, just go and vote, just lead the way. I don't like what I see, but no, nah, I'll trust yeah. you. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty much me as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. So you kind of went about it, I guess, in that way of like, well, a lot of people do, they want to teach themselves online and there's nothing wrong inherently with that, but you're right. You do have to sift through a lot of crap uh, online and often you'll find uh, once you do understand things pretty well that a lot of these people online don't know what they're talking about. 
um, or yeah. they're just garbage or they're just trying to make a quick sale or whatever it be. Um, there's a lot of that going on, unfortunately, in technical communities. Yeah, and also knowing how, how much time I'd put into it by myself. And then when I first met Maddie and he's telling me, you got, you've been in this longer than me, but I reckon coming along for the journey with Empire, um, it's probably just a few things you need to fine tune to be on your way. And it was like after going through the courses and everything, just a few minor details. And this is why I stress this thing about having the good foundations. So I went back to square one, dropped the ego and thought, I'll, I'll make sure I've got the foundations right before I start working on the things I want to want to do. Right. I like that kind of building the from the ground up rather than uh, what I see a lot of people do. And it's pretty common, I think, for people who are learning along the way. They just want to find like the ultimate strategy, the ultimate like one true pony that will just make the money forever. And it's just not that simple. It's, yeah, like you say, building that foundation and slowly kind of coning your knowledge into one specific point and getting really good at one or two really like consistent strategies. That's kind of how I see it um, rather than just strategy hopping and trying to just look for every new shiny object that someone throws in your face. Yeah, exactly. Cause everyone's got a different style. And I see a lot of guys like they chase the two to ones, the three to ones, which nothing wrong with that. Like I've been there and done that, but I do like, like having my life. So I'm fairly lazy when it comes to um, the charts. I'll look for these big trades and I'll, I'll look for them off certain levels. And I know when I'm looking for a 10 to one or a five to one, I don't really need to check my phone for a day, two days, and I can set it, forget it, and then have more of my life back as well. So Yeah. Yeah, it plays into the kind of lifestyle factor of trading. Some people kind of get a bit consumed, I think, by the the trading aspect of things, and it's often to their detriment just over trading, over analyzing the market. When um, the whole point of trading is to get our independence, our freedom. So, um, yeah, yeah. In saying that, with the way the market's moving, it's <laughs> I can't get off. There's <laughs> just so many good opportunities, and it's hard not to just go balls deep in it as me and Seds were the other night, 16 or 17 trades each. <laughs> oh, man. But, you know, I'm, I'm a firm believer in, you know, there's kind of like two components to, to trading. One's like the, the the market has to be ready to be traded and you have to be ready to trade it. And when those things are in balance, like you just, you got to take your opportunities. And I, I think it's been a, a market in recent periods that's just given so much to those who are there ready for it. Um so yeah, like I, I can understand why why you, why you have been so um so on the markets lately because there's been so much there to take. Yeah, well, I like that saying where it's saying, um, making wealth is taking a, a high a lot of a high risk things with a bit of small capital and uh, maintaining wealth is taking low risk with large amounts of capital. And if you're not at that large capital, why do I? Why do I want to be taking low risk with stuff? So it's small amounts of capital, but over a lot of different things. And as you're saying, market's timed right now to actually start making money on a lot of these things. Yeah, yeah. Um, just want to quickly highlight while we're here, because um, like like you say, you a lot of traders typically, I think that the standard trader approach is, is somewhere targeting, you know, pretty... Uh, consistently two to ones, three to one type trades, maybe four to one type trades. Uh, from what I see looking in, and um, we won't get too focused on the the trading strategy per se, but more, I guess, your kind of philosophy towards trading seems to be more geared towards taking, yeah, um, smaller shots. But when you line up those shots, you're targeting much bigger moves. You're getting in at much deeper levels. Um, and am I right in saying that's kind of the general philosophy of your approach? I do get in at much deeper levels. I I stagger my buy-ins as well, so that's why everyone's going, geez, you snipe those entries. I do. <laughs> yeah. But I've also got a strategy for doing that off levels and out of channels, and I, I snipe my entries, and I do go harder than most people, and this is why I'm reluctant to share my strategy with newer guys because – Normally, when I'm 
I'm entering a trade, it might be up to four four percent of my account when I'm staggering my, my entries. Uh, once once it starts to pop, I'll normally cash out half at that two to one before I take that last bit at my ten to one. So yeah, I, I am taking more risk, but it comes with the years of practice as well. Yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah, I really want to stress that point for new traders listening in and wanting to just siphon everything that Carlin knows about trading and how he approaches the market. Um, this style of trading is definitely not for everyone. Uh, you need to know what you're doing very well um, because it is a inherently riskier strategy if you don't know what you're doing. Um, if you are a little bit earlier on in your trading journey and you struggle with some of the specifics, I think, on the chart, you are better off giving yourself slightly bit more wiggle room in where you are targeting in terms of levels. And that goes for entry, stop losses and take profits, in my opinion, because generally speaking, you're probably not as accurate as you might think you are um, at those stages in your, your analyzing trading journey. So, um, yeah, for someone like yourself who gets in, staggers in at, at deep levels, um, there is obviously inherent risk involved in that, but um, from what I can hear, you, you sound like you have a, a very comprehensive management style and uh, you're very refined in the the way that you enter these trades and how you just stay yeah. in them and manage them. Very, very surgical with how I enter them and, you know, quick to get out and take a profit of that two to one or that three to one, which then reduces my risk. And then it's basically not even that 1% risk when I'm pushing these um, 10 to ones. So yeah. I sort of, um, yeah, I get level out of them fairly quickly, but um, yeah, the profits there as if I was doing a 1% um, risk on these 10 to one trades. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, um, we'll keep pushing things along because yeah, we don't want to spend all day talking about the, the strategy and give away, give away everything, but yeah, um, yeah, so I, I guess there's, there's clearly a, a psychological burden to balance there with uh, a unique trading approach and uh, really keen to kind of crack your head open as much as I can and figure out like uh, your mindset and your approach psychologically to trading. So uh, in, in your own words, like what do you, uh, what does it mean to have the the right mindset in trading? It's it's a battle. you got to be ready to go to war, like, coming from a background of martial arts, everything that I've done, I've been prepared to go down the hard road and do the hardest thing. When I wake up, even going to the gym each day, I think about what I don't want to do and I make myself do that just because of Bill's character. Oh, I want to do chess. No, you're doing legs today. It's <laughs> like I make myself suffer. So I'm, I'm battle ready for that. And it's like with the strategy, with... With the mindset, it's like, okay, I'm going into this. I'm ready to lose this. But at the same time, I back my ability with what I've developed and developing with, I know I'm going to be okay in the long run. But it is that hard road of just doing the shit you don't want to do every day. And on the other side of that is the life you want. Yeah. That's um, some really, really hard hitting advice, I think, for a lot of people and uh, resonates a lot with me, the taking the hard road at, at every moment, because um, I, I think that is necessary to to make it in this space. Um, I'm a big believer in the fact that you have kind of two options in life in general and, and both involve pain. One is the, the pain of kind of doing what you don't want to do every single day, like you say, and one is the pain of doing what you want to do every day and then ending up in a place that you never wanted to go to. And yeah, um, it's, um, it's hard getting rich, but it's also hard being poor. Choose your heart. Yeah. Choose your heart. And that that's, I think, um, yeah, something that a lot of people have to learn, unfortunately the hard way, but um, it's a reality of life. You, you're destined to suffer to some degree. It's about choosing what you can bear and suffer yourself. Yeah. And I've got this thing, I, I say it to the guys here at work, I, I say to them, at the end of each day, can you look yourself in the mirror and say, have have I done all I can to reach my goals? We've all got the same 24 hours in a day. 
You know what I mean? Michael yeah. Jordan never made his high school basketball team. What did he do? He went home and worked harder and harder. And we all have that same 24 hours. So what do we want to do? Just give up or let someone else take it? I'm there going, I can have everything I want in this life. And I'll work my ass off and I'll make sure I'm out working everyone. Yeah, I'll sleep later because, yeah, yeah I want to make sure that I'm doing more more than the next guy. Yeah. Man, I, I love that that saying, like, like, I can have whatever I want in my life. Like, that is one of the most powerful realisations I think a person can have. I feel like myself was, it was something I realised probably like four or five years ago of like, fuck, like this whole world is here for the taking and anything I want is within my grasp. You just have to go out and put the work in and go and get it, um, which is, yeah, such a powerful realisation. I think that's a big component of probably like your psychology that, that really seems to keep you going. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because I know we were talking about what's your why today and everyone said, speaker said, it's got to be something bigger than you. I, my belief is it doesn't you you got to want it so bad for yourself like that my why is me I, I know what I want in this world and I try to say to people imagine what you wanted to be as a kid or anything you wanted to do and this gets drained out of you as you get older and you settle for a job to pay bills and I've never been that guy I'm like fuck a job I don't want to do this <laughs> I, I, I want that fucking shiny car I want two of them I'm <laughs> I'm going to get everything I want and how can I do this? And I broke it down backwards. I, I don't want to be a celebrity. I don't want to be in the limelight, but I want to make a fuck ton of money. How can I do it? And trade, trading trading made sense when I came across it. And it's just like, it, it's not a quick road. It's about consistency, building your capital and it compounds and it compounds fast when you're doing it right. Yeah, definitely. How do you uh, find the kind of like trading journey for yourself? Like, have you had any like challenging periods where like, I don't know, generally speaking, it's, it's a daily challenge, a daily conquest that you set out to achieve, but have you had any like really rough periods in trading? Um, well, and how did you overcome yeah. them? Um, okay. So I'll tell you a story about the last bull run on mm. the cave that happened and all that. I was, I was stuck in Malaysia at the time got locked down there, mm-hmm. met my lovely wife over there, but we just got got together. But they said, everyone's got to leave the country. You guys are going back home. I wasn't ready to go back home. So I said, fuck this, I'm staying in Malaysia. Just before the bull market happened, I took all my funds just so I, I risked it all on a girl <laughs> because my, my attitude was I've been through one bull cycle um, yeah, I might miss this, but I was willing to risk it all on something. And my my opinion is I'm a fucking money machine. I'll remake this shit. And that's what I've done. And I've done it like tenfold. So yeah, I missed out on most of the bull market last year. I threw my advice with guys at work. I had guys that made over half a million dollars just with some of my advice. And I'm watching these guys get fucking rich and I'm there going, I'm doing this all for a girl. But even in that tough time going, fuck, I like money. I like, I was willing to risk it all on what I wanted and just having the faith, I can fucking do this anytime I want. I can print money and I'll do it again. And I'll do it even better. And so, yeah, it was tough missing out on that because I'm there calculating, not even trading, just with what I was holding. I'm like, yeah, you know, that would have been cool. Probably about quarter mil <laughs> I've missed uh-huh. out on. <laughs> And I'm there going, yeah, and I pulled it all too early, but I'm like, I, I did it for what I wanted. I got what I wanted and, yeah, money comes and goes and I knew I could make it again and here I am doing it. Could I be further further down the line now? Yeah, but I, I'm not worried about it being a bull market. I'm there going, I can do this in any market. Yeah. So, and yeah, uh, so you yeah, did panic oh it's a bull market oh it's my last shot to get rich it's like no you're just not backing your ability to wake up and do this day in day out and i do so yeah i'm not worried it's just exciting times we're in the bull market it's um it's a lot easier but i know there's going to be times when market's going down and 
I'm still going to have to wake up. And they're going to be the tougher times, but I know I've got the ability to wake up and print money in those times as well. Yeah, I, I admire your kind of unwavering faith in yourself to to perform when you need to perform. It's, um, it's really good love, to do. Honestly, I love the pressure. I thrive under it. I love, <laughs> yeah. I love yeah. pressure. It's uh, it's a funny thing. Some people really crumble, but others, it's like a almost a necessity to have that fire underneath their ass to to really perform. Oh yeah, I, I don't want the easy road. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, on the other side of the shit you don't want to do is the life you want. So. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Um, so yeah, is and just to clarify that that um girl, that's your wife now, right? Yep. Ah, oh, well, congratulations, mate. You've uh, you've got the got the girl and you've got the bag now. So sounds like it all yep. paid off. <laughs> yeah. Uh, look, I'm I'm right in my life. You know what I mean? It's not not the government. It's not not a boss. I'm I do I do work. I help out a cryptocurrency company with R and D, but I get to sit here and trade most of the day. Yeah. Yeah. Look through what they need me to, and now I've found that perfect balance i've still got that comfort of making a nice salary but here i am going i don't even need that yeah it's not so good a thing isn't living it living in bali and um doing what most people dream of and i say people go how or what's what's the way to do it i said it it, it is hard work I, yeah i was willing to do it and back back to doing 17 hours a day just because the markets are moving right now this reminded me of when I first started. Like I used to work 10 hours a day. I used to be a scenic artist. I, I was cage fighting at the time as well. So I'd do 10 hour a day. I'd go train for three hours afterwards. I'd go for a run and then I'd get home about 9.30, 10, eat dinner. I'd have 45 minutes before I'd be there to watch US markets open. And then I'd be at up until 2 30 in the morning learning this shit on the internet um by myself before i had empire but i'd put in the hours i'd have four hours sleep and i did that for about two years came friday night i wasn't interested in going out i'd, I'd literally crash out i'd sleep for 16 hours just so i could wake up the next week and do it again made sure i didn't have a life but i was doing the things i wanted I was making money i was fighting and i was learning how to trade and I just took on as much as I could. And current situation, it made me feel like that again. Markets are booming and I'm sitting there <laughs> 17 hours in front of the screen, just finding opportunities. Just and it reminds you. me of the old days, back when, <laughs> back when I wanted to be, back where I wanted to be where I am now. So it's <laughs> exciting. I'm like, you know, you thought things were going to change when you got there. <laughs> it's like, I'm, I'm still doing the same shit. <laughs> oh man that's funny to hear i i really like the the early trading stories i'm hearing in uh these conversations i'm having with um people on, on this podcast because uh they all kind of mirror each other in some degree and um that story you've told about kind of the, the the two year stint where you're really just grinding to learn to trade it's uh so I, I think everyone who's kind of been there it's it's so lonely and so rough because uh, you're right. You're you're genuinely working full time. You're trying to learn technical analysis on the side. I know for myself, like I was catching the train in, into work every day. I was sitting on my little laptop doing charts on the train. I was reading, listening to a podcast while I'd go from the train to the bus to work, and I'd be reading my Kindle on the way there. And I'd be getting home. First thing I'd do is jump on the charts and spend four or five hours there, go to the gym, come back on the charts. And then it's, you know, time for bed at 1, 2 a.m. You're up at 5 a.m. the next day. You feel like a zombie and you do it all again. And it's that for such a long period. And it's so daunting and you're not really getting the results. People don't know why the hell you're doing it. And it's, uh, yeah, it's a very lonely time. Yeah, oh, most definitely. But that's that's the thing people give up too quickly when they're not seeing results it's like what people are willing to go to university for four or five years no results to um, have a hex debt and become a lawyer or something they're willing to pay for the privilege of that and it's like what you're paying to have a job i'm like 
that never sat <laughs> right with me. I'm like, fuck that. I'm like, I can't, I can't do that. But, but I wish I had have known about Empire and didn't have the ego originally. And um, yeah, it sped up the whole process. Like the night's learning by yourself and you're like, fuck, I wasted so much time doing it by myself. Yeah. When there is a, there is an easier way. And, you know, I, I do get a lot of people ask me or say, oh, I can't do this or, oh, where, where'd you learn how to do this? I said, all the tools are right there. Like you'll see me in the Empire group. I, I'm i not, not like the rest of the guys who send up the charts. Like all the tools that I had and have are there, but I'll drop hints like I, I was mentioning the last five days about injecting. If anyone had a, had a looked at it, I'm like, yeah, look at the three-day chart, guys. Look at the three-day chart. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, it was a massive fucking um, bull flag. And what happened yesterday? <laughs> it was yeah. going seven one hundred percent But I'm not the guy to hand it to people on a silver platter, but I'll, I'll drop <laughs> in. It's like, yeah, the tools are there. It's yeah. your to use them. And it's not that I'm, I don't want to share. I just want to show people the tools are there. You got to have the want and the initiative to start using them. And once once you're there, like I'm more than willing. Anyone comes to Bali, sit down with me, and I'll I'll explain what I do face to face. And like I had one of my mates, he decent trader. I he was with me for the last month, and I showed him what I do. He just sent me his first screenshot of his first four thousand percent trade of of my strategy. And I'm like, dude, you're outshining me now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome though. It's um cool to see Adam mate. I'll I will take you up that offer because I, I do love Bali been a couple of times. It's a great place. Um so yeah I'll, I'll be paying you a visit mate. You can uh, show me the the strategy. Yeah. But yeah, uh, let's keep moving on because uh, I've got a few more questions I, I want to ask you. And uh, I can imagine uh, you as a, a trader, you you mentioned a couple of times that you kind of had to break down your ego in the early days. Um, can you shed a bit of light on that for me? Like, what, what do you mean by your ego was stopping you from learning, you know, the right way or stopping you in that early phase of trading? Well, just, just the internet itself, you go, all the knowledge is there on the internet, but how are you to decide or how can you work out without trial and error of what, what's the right knowledge or what's the wrong knowledge? It's basically, I learned something, I try. okay, that didn't work. There's a lot of trial and error when you're just trying to find things on the internet. But when you're with a group of guys that are constantly getting results, but that's where I bit the bullet where it was originally MBA days. Like I watched all of those guys, you you probably were there that time early in the piece. And yeah, after the first bull run in 2017, I'm there going, fuck it, you should do this. I missed missed the second one with my decisions, which I don't regret, but I think we were still in COVID when I was talking to Maddie, and he's like, no, just jump on board. And I'm like, all right, spent, spent all my money living in Malaysia, but I didn't mind. But I'm like, yeah, yeah, he's right. How, how about I just do this? Because I said I've been going, I was going to do it. Said I was going to join NBA. Fuck it, just do it. And I did. And then, you know, all the politics happened. But I followed Matty and had faith in him and the team that he was building. And I said, yeah, I, I'm here with guys that do know more than me or do certain things that I don't do. Like, you got... Sammy with his airdrops, you got um, Sean with his NFTs. I'm like, I've got no fucking clue about this. Crypto is such a big space where you could specialize in one area and be missing so much more opportunities. And when you've got a team of guys that have their eyes on different aspects, there's just so many opportunities there. And it's like, all right, I see value in being part of this team and um, they've been able to pick pick the brains of guys with a lot more knowledge in areas that I'm not familiar with. Yeah. That's good. So, you know, to kind of accept your own like deficiencies and your knowledge gaps and not really make that an issue for yourself. Just go, well, 
these guys are directing their attention in these places. They're studying these things. They know more and there's some value to gain out of that. And yeah, I, I think the the spread of knowledge in the Empire team is is really good. Well, everyone's kind of got their own little niches and uh, everyone's got a little bit to to gain from just being around that sphere, I think. Yeah, and it comes back, like this was a thing I got taught when I was back doing Muay Thai and fighting, which was a trainer says, practice doesn't make perfect. Practice makes permanent. So if you're if you're practicing something like shit or you've learned a bad habit and you're practicing, that's going to stay permanent. So that's why I could easily drop, drop the ego. Of, I, I shouldn't have to pay for anything and just go, all right, let's just act like I know nothing. Sit there through, you know, basic candlestick courses and I acted like I knew nothing, but it's like I started from square one, even though I wasn't there. And um, it got rid of any bad habits I had along the way just by going, all right, it was just minor adjustments in what I was doing to improve my overall um, trading style. Yeah. And that's yeah, that's what I say. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff out there on the internet, but yeah, don't believe everything you read. Yeah, definitely. It's an equal amount of garbage as there is uh, really valuable things online. Yeah. Um, do you want to segue this on to some of the emotional side of trading? Because uh, I think it's inevitable for every person in the market to encounter the, the fear and greed aspect of trading. Um, we are humans. We feel emotions, natural. But um, how, how do we temper ourselves in the market is the important question for me. And how do you not let your way you're feeling mess up your decision making while you're trading? Uh, so uh, I want to know from you, like how you manage your fear and greed in high pressure situations. And if you have any like specific techniques that you use to keep your head in check. To be completely honest, I'm pretty much surgical about everything. You can even ask my ex. She, she'd call me a robot. She goes, you've got zero emotion about anything. I just, I'd treat it as a job back when I was fighting same thing. Got guys out the back. Trainers are there going, you ready? Get hot. I'm there going, yeah, I'm ready. My job's to go out there and hurt someone and come back. He's like, why aren't you excited? I'm like, because it's a job. Like, there's zero emotion in what I do. I just take it as a job. Okay, find something. If it's not there, um, it's not it. I'm not trying to push it. So it's more about preservation of capital and waiting for those right opportunities. And... I just treat it as a job. There's no panic in me to go, I need to do this, this bull market. This is my only opportunity. It's like, all right, if I, um, if there's no opportunity, what can I do instead? I can go off and learn something. I can research something. I'm always looking for something else to do. I'm not there going, well, sit here on my hands and wait, wait for that opportunity. No, I can spend my time doing something else learning something, getting better, improving a different aspect of my life, even going to the gym. It's like, you know, as traders, we sit there a lot in front of a computer, but it's that whole whole lifestyle balance of I'm trying to push myself in every aspect. And it's like, you know, I'll set my alerts. I'm not, I don't need to push something. I, I've, I've got patience and I've got confidence in the ability to be able to do this in any market it's just this is the fun time we're in so i more i more try to enjoy where we are right now than um have, have the greed that's awesome uh so yeah to summarize i guess it's a it's a surgical approach that you have uh very robotic and uh that's from when you read like trading psychology books and you hear from the best traders, that's that is the approach, the the robotic approach. You are you have a system and you follow that system like a robot. I think that's the pinnacle of what a, a trader should aim to be. Um, they shouldn't be trading, you know, their intuition or their own biases. They should understand themselves to a level where they can literally apply a strategy by the book and take it that way. So. Uh, it speaks 
a lot to, I think, how well you're going at the moment, especially um, having that approach. Yeah, it's just all about keeping that level head and have zero emotion in it. Like, I, I always say this thing, emotion clouds judgment. Like, whether it's whether it's good emotion or bad emotion. Like, you, you know, you and your mates could be drinking on the roof and everyone's having fun and everyone's happy. It's a good idea to jump off the roof in the pool. Like, <laughs> and, and then you jump it jump off the roof, miss the pool and break your arm or something. But you were happy when you made that emotion, <laughs> that decision, sorry. Yeah. Emotion clouds judgment. Maybe the alcohol does if you're jumping off the roof. But <laughs> um, but emotion, whether it's good or bad, clouds judgment. So, um, yeah, so I, I think you're... Well, I understand that. It's like I don't make um, any decision with, with emotion. I, I think it out... But I also think out the result that I want and work back from the result of what moves am I going to do to get the result. So I dissect where I want to be or what I want to do backwards as well. Yeah, reverse engineering your your goals to now is a really good way, I think, to figure out like what are the steps involved to getting to where I want to be because uh, often it's it's very cloudy, like the the difference between where you are now and where you want to be and kind of what yeah. is involved in that. Um, but yeah, reverse engineering that person that you'll be when you are at that goal and all the attributes of that kind of just leads back to where you are now and fills in the gap. So it's yeah. interesting that you, you, know, you break it down, work it all the way back from where you want to be down into what can I do right now today? Mm -hmm. You just got to make sure that shit is done every fucking day. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's keep going on. I want to hear about some uh, big wins and losses. Um, so if you don't mind, we'll start on some highs. Uh, do you have a memorable trading success uh, that you want to share and some key factors that might have been involved in that one? Uh, not even, I wouldn't even call it trading, but back in um, 20, what was it, 2017, Picking picking up Chainlink under a dollar, like when when I first found Chainlink, <laughs> and um, yeah, that that's pretty much where I was hooked. Like I still I still love Link, but um, <laughs> it all makes sense now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but um, that was probably my biggest win that had me hooked. And uh, okay, I did take a bit of profits, but then I went through that emotion of like I, I still believe it can be a 500 dollars coin a long way down the track but I, I was there in 2017 go this is this will get to 500 dollars at least so i took some profits when we we're at highs but then i watched it all that psychology of as most people have it in the crypto market no we're going to go higher we're going to go higher and then watch it rise and then go back at least I took something, but yeah, that was, that was probably my biggest, um, biggest investment. I had a few thousand dollars in link at the time and watched it just skyrocket. So but, uh, it's like probably your, I do one of your biggest wins, but also like one of your biggest lessons at the same time from the sounds yeah, of it. Which, um, okay. I took half and it was probably one of my biggest losses as well. <laughs> Up, you know what I mean? <laughs> any new people in crypto, I do explain that that psychology of even guys that are buying and holding coins. I'm saying you will, there will come a time where you don't want to sell and you think this is going to go higher and this isn't going to stop. This party's not going to stop. I said, and there's it, it's hard to let go, but when when you watch these things, like two two times around now drop 80 to 90 percent it it's time it's easy to let shit go you know what <laughs> i mean but trying to tell someone new that you can buy this for so much cheaper like okay my uncle for example he got in at solana a couple bucks he threw four grand in it he ended up turning it to sixty five thousand dollars or something and when the market turned he first time in crypto old, old school house guy like bricks and mortar, that's where he makes money. And I got the apology. He goes, I've never seen anything make money so fast like crypto. 
And when we topped out and I probably made the call to get rid of a little bit I had left um, at 60,000 when Bitcoin topped. And I told him, sell it all. He's like, no, no, it's going to go high. Solana will get to 400. I'm like, no, best not <laughs> around. So he, he, he took his initial investment and he watched this dwindle down to nothing. And no. Come back up, and I'm like, think how much he could have bought at ten dollars with sixty k. He could have done it all again. Could have done it twice, yeah. Ah, oh, yeah. Story so to you, don't I? You will feel like this doesn't end, and the chart. Once you learn charts, the charts don't lie. It's just now. Now it's time. <laughs> yeah. Get out. Zero yeah. emotion. 100%. Uh, once you've kind of been through it uh, one or two times, quite often you have to, I think, learn from the, the school of hard knocks for a lot of people. Um, sounds like uh, yeah, he did. Everyone goes through it once. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, once you kind of go through a few cycles, you you see it naturally, This yeah, these insane price appreciations that seem like they're never going to end, and then 80 to 90% of that gets given right back. And, uh yeah, I mean, it'll it'll probably happen all again in this market too, where we're going to see this crazy, but uh, it eventually will have the bear market that will. But this, is what I say, this is what I say about cryptos. We all have our favorite projects that we like and believe in, but the I, I try to explain to people right now. Crypto is just a big pot of money. All these things have a cool narrative and a cool story. We're slowly seeing adoption of some of these things, but not as fast as we think it's going to happen. So instead of, yeah, buy the narrative, but this is just a big pot of money right now. And, you know, if you're smart, you're putting money in last year into this pot. you got to decide when you're going to stop putting money into this pot and start taking money back out of this pot. Don't keep on throwing money in, and then that pot's gone, and you're you're still throwing money in, thinking I'll take it later. That pot's already gone. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, well, I think uh, some very valuable lessons to take out of uh, the conversation we've had thus far on on this topic. So, if you're listening and uh, this is your first bull market, just beware it will end at one stage, and uh, you best of taking some profits along the way. Oh, most uh, so uh, let's move on to uh, risk management side of things. So, uh, what do you what do you kind of rate like risk management as? How crucial in trading, and do you have any kind of strategies that you like to implement to to mitigate your risk? It, it's probably the most crucial thing because if you if you don't have money, you can't play the game. So it it's a bunch of small wins, not trying to get that one big win. Yeah, all right. <laughs> in saying that, you guys see my trades, but it still <laughs> is risk management with doing it. So, yeah, the way I enter is it's um, suitable for my risk management. Um, I might be a four percent of my account into a trade, but the way I stagger it, I'll probably still only lose about two percent if I'm wrong. Yeah. So that's that's the way I liked like to do it it's very very surgical with my entries like I, that's why i do 17 hours on a computer but <laughs> but in saying that i am quick to take some of the profits off the board at that two to one three to one so then i can aim for that 10 to one or five to one with with the rest maybe at one and a half two percent in that trade if if it's two percent running and i do hit that 10 to one i'll take uh, one and a half percent of the initial is left and I'll let the last bit run because that advice from um, Wall Street um, let your good trades run I'll move my stop loss up in profit and that's why sometimes well you saw four thousand percent the other day that's probably only half percent of the original trade but it's still making money yeah yeah. So it's just cream now. You know what I mean? It's not like I've put 20% of my account on it and I'm a schoolionaire from one trade. <laughs> yeah. I'll, um, I really like the fact that you 
you have a, a philosophy and a, and a risk management strategy that involves you taking profits along the way, but also allowing your trades to let them run. Um, it's a very hard thing to do. I think when traders approach the market is the trade management side of things. I think a lot of people focus on just like what does a good setup look like and how to just get into that trade, but the the management of it all and staying in that trade for and, and getting everything that you should get out of that trade is, is so difficult for, for a lot of people. Um, it sounds like you've got a pretty regimented way of kind of approaching that, ensuring that even if, say, the trade doesn't go to 2,000, 3,000%, you still get out at, you know, a pretty nominal risk to reward and take yeah, something out of the already trade. Banked. I've already banked profits at that two to one or three to one. So it's still a winning trade. It's just not the win I'd like. You know what I mean? That thing of you either win big, you win small or you lose small. Eliminate yeah. that, eliminate that losing big. And yeah. then it then becomes profitable pretty yeah. quickly. Yeah. The, the equation there kind of just all equals over the long term that you're going to be profitable when you treat it that way, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, do you have any advice for traders who kind of struggle to to either just establish rules for risk management or just even stick to the rules that they set for themselves? I reckon that it's more more examining your own mindset towards it if they're struggling to you go, do you you got to ask yourself, do I really fucking want this? Because this is what the good traders are doing. Why why aren't why aren't I doing it? Because I'm and most of the time, it's a flaw in their own psychology. Yeah, you want to get rich quick. You want to do it quick. You've got to examine what you're doing. If it's working for everyone else, why is it going to be different for you? What, why can you throw 50% on, a, on one trade and expect to be, be the guy that does it? Do, do what's working for the masses. And all the top guys like come in, all you guys sort of have the same thing it's one percent risk and um and if it's working for everyone else that's obviously what's working for the majority you know what i mean you're not going to be be the exception and go yeah right i can throw 10 percent on each trade and i'm going to do that do it yeah it, so, uh, it does that's a, a really fascinating point you brought up is yeah like so, as you yourself psychologically trying to think about what what it is that is going on in your head that is stopping you from failing to stick to these rules because they're that you're right it's the it's the rules for everyone and no one is an exception to that and there's a, a lot of arrogance i think in someone who says oh yeah like i can i can put 30 40 percent of my account on this one trade because i'm different I'm, yeah because i'm different but most of the time when you break it down it's the psychology of it and why do you want to do that because you want to make money fast like this ain't a, this ain't a sprint it's a fucking marathon you can do this day in day out you can do it from the beach in bali off your phone if you if you do it correctly you know what i mean it's not a one-off thing and i think that is where people lack the ability like hearing people worried about missing the bull market because they think it's their one shot to get rich like it it's not once you have this skill and you can do it day in day out and it's like and you can build that capital it's like fuck I, if i've got five million dollars in the bank and i need to i, I can find a two percent movement in the market without leverage that's that's a hundred k you know what i mean yeah so, yeah <laughs> so I, I can then take a lot less risk and find find that movement and be making a lot of money but the key is to build the capital first. You're not going to do it by um, taking all the risk in one go. It's, yeah. 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 Definitely to do it. A lot of, I think a, a lot of people fail at trading purely based on that undercapitalization factor coming into the market with a little bit too uh, little money and trying to put two big trades on with that money themselves. Yeah. Yeah. They, they're wanting to get rich. Um, quick or they don't back their ability or they don't have the ability yet to be able to realize that you can do this day in day out market markets are moving every day yeah so yeah, you just uh, know what you know and then you find something profitable 100 percent 
have you come to view money over the years? Because obviously being a trader, money is kind of the centerpiece or one of the centerpieces of what you're doing. And it plays a big factor in your life. Uh, quite often, you know, money is a big factor for people. Um, so I'm just interested to hear from you how you've come to view it over the years. And also with your trading itself, like, do you have any particular plan for the money that you make when you trade? Uh, till, till, till I hit 30 million, I'm broke. <laughs> uh, once I get the, when I hit three, I'm doing okay. But th 30 mil is the goal, like, to be honest with you. Uh, after that, then, but I, I view money as a tool and it lets you do what you want in this life. Mm -hmm. like, it's not, it, I don't know. It's like people go, I have all these ideas of what they want to do, but it's like, yeah, but you got to put in the work to do it. But money is just a tool for me. And I look at it like if you if you have to decide on whether I want to buy the GDR or the Mercedes, I don't have enough. I want to I want to buy both. So <laughs> I've got I've got that um, work ethic of no, I'm still not stopping till till I make enough where I don't have to decide what I want. So I yeah. just stick to the process of yeah, just keep on making it like. Most people create a life where um, with the money they got, they're happy to create a comfortable life. And if I can't afford the Mercedes, I bought the new Holden or something and I, I'm doing okay. I'm there going, no, if I can't afford the Lambo, I, I ain't doing okay. <laughs> so yeah, I'm not willing to settle or compromise with myself for the things I want. And um, just because it's, it's an easy or comfortable spot in life to settle. I'm willing to just keep on working for it because I know I can get it. Yeah. And that's that's what I'm doing. It's like most people would think it's a big thing to get up and um, leave Australia. It was easy for me, but I'm like, I'm paying 1% tax. I'm doing um, what I want and banking a heap more money and putting it into the things that are going to benefit me. And it's a far more comfortable life. So I make the hard decisions. Most people don't, don't want to do that. They just want to get to a point where they make themselves comfortable. I'm fine being uncomfortable out of my comfort zone, knowing the rewards there at the end of the goal that I set myself. I uh, will say, you, you said it earlier on in the interview that uh, your ex called you a robot. And uh, I would probably second that statement. You are very... Uh, surgical in the the way you think about things and uh i think i think that's great because honestly like it, it bodes so well in the trading space to to think about things that way yeah oh definitely but yeah, yeah I, just, I just look at it as i'm on a mission this is what i set out to do and i'm not done i'm i won't settle i won't give myself a pat on the back i can stop and enjoy where i've got to but the job's not done yeah Thank you uh, for, for sharing that. Um, and yeah, I, I agree as well from a, a money point of view, very um, much to view it as it's a tool. It's uh, merely just a, a utility that we can use to our advantage to grow ourselves and get what we want. And I love your philosophy towards it as well, because it's like, goes back to what we were saying earlier in the call when you know you realize that you can literally have whatever you want in life and you don't settle or compromise yourself your values and, and your needs for anything and you you accept that fact and you can go out and get what you want so uh, i have no doubt that you'll in time get to your 30 mil goal um, and you'll probably go well beyond that yeah well the, i have a simple rule with money it's yeah. get money use that money to make more money and trading's not just the one thing it's like find something. If I can exchange a certain amount of money for um, a business or time that I only have to put two or three hours into a week, that's returning me more money. If I'm putting three hours into something and it's returning me a thousand dollars a week, why aren't I going to put money in? Who makes yeah. a thousand bucks for working three hours? You know what I mean? I use yeah. it as a tool of putting it somewhere that's going to generate me more money. And it as I say, we all know about compound interest and you create those streams where it's just compounding 
all of a sudden there comes a point where you, you're making that much that you can start doing all the shit you want. It, yeah. You don't have to choose. You're doing everything you want. Yeah. The uh, com- compounding interest is one of the greatest phenomena in the in the world. I think it's oh, yeah. uh, so so powerful. When you f- start to see it firsthand, it's like, wow! It, it's just growing. It's just growing like so quickly, exponentially, and it's such a fascinating thing to see play out firsthand. But yeah, it's it's a powerful phenomenon that I think as traders, like that, that is how we assert our freedom. We compound our wealth over time very slowly but surely and then eventually it just really starts to speed up yeah uh, so yeah <laughs> uh just want to uh, we're, we're nearing the end here and uh, you've been super generous with everything you shared mate so i really appreciate it but um i just want to get some of your kind of thoughts about the the current market landscape and like just a sort of future potential trends you see in crypto for the next little while you've kind of, we've kind of touched on the, the current market environment but what do you see to come well i i see the ai narrative this time around just going nuts and it is thanks nvidia <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it's going to be the ai and i see gaming like the strong DeFi things are making a comeback as well but I'm I'm also looking after being through two of these cycles. Like I'm always searching for new coins. Of I know the holes in crypto that I look for. If if it's a fix to this whole thing running seamlessly, I'm I'm investing in the narrative of the solution. You know what I mean? So yeah. if we've got that narrative, I'm investing. In, they might fix it in the long run, but while we're still in the cycle, I'm going to make money, then take my money back out of that. <laughs> yeah. But, but yeah. yeah, I I see well a lot of institutional money coming in right now. It's crazy. But when I, I was looking through everything before the ETF was approved, I I had a target roughly this cycle of around nine to ten and a half trillion total market cap. I said that's that's where I believe we get to, and that's where I'll be looking to scale out of a lot of things. And we could go a whole lot higher, but that's where I've I'm looking at with this yeah. cycle. Wow! And uh, just just for those playing at home, I, I, I wouldn't know exactly, but I believe we're sitting around two trillion dollar market cap at the moment. So, um, yeah, expecting big things for this for, the, for this cycle. And uh, I'm in that camp with you as well. Uh, sort of minimum cycle objectives on Bitcoin itself, like 102k for myself. That's just simple one six one eight from uh, the bear market, but like it, I feel generally like there are more technical targets begging higher than that. And that would correspond with yeah, a total market cap in that range. So interesting to see that you have a similar opinion about that. And it seems wild to think about, but gee, it's uh, going to be a fun ride, I think. Oh yeah. Oh, most definitely. It's always a fun ride. <laughs> a fun ride in the bull market. Yeah. <laughs> and man, we deserve it because Bloody hell, the you know we we can ride the, the bear market down, but it is a it's a sour period to participate in in the markets. I, f- I feel it's uh, much tougher to to trade, but also the the mood is battling the mind, mindset. There's a lot of negativity that tries to creep in, and you know you sometimes go, is this over? <laughs> is it go- <laughs> going to go back up again? When? But yeah, it's just like. Yeah, just trust the process and it's like any market, once you've got the t- skills to trade, you can make money. In. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so we'll wrap it up in a sec, but uh, just get, I want to get your final sort of comments, words of advice for aspiring traders, anyone who's sort of starting off their journey, if you've got any words of wisdom for them, you can share them now. It's be willing to work your ass off for it. Like, you know, it takes four years to become a lawyer. It takes five, six years to become a doctor. You're not going to be a trader overnight. And especially if you don't put in the work, find guys that are doing the stuff that you want or getting the results you want and find a mentor and stick with them, follow it. You're not going to develop your own good strategy 
just just because you decided you're going to become a trader. It's trial and error and a lot of trial and error to find out what works or even your own trading style. So it's like, yeah, it's worth paying for the education. Hex debt costs more than Empire. So it, it's actually a financial sense to do Empire instead of go to university. <laughs> and you make money along the way. But, but then when you've got support of guys that actually want to see you win, it, the only limitation is you you yourself, how much work you want to put in. And if you're willing to outwork every other guy, you're going to get the results. Yeah, that's uh, extremely sound advice. I uh, would echo that completely uh, for anyone at home listening to this. Uh, yeah, couldn't say that better myself. So, uh, yeah, thank you so much, Carlin, for jumping on, mate. Really appreciate you taking time to step into the limelight and uh, show okay. everyone what you're all about. <laughs> No worries. It's uh, um, it's been a, it's been a pleasure. For a chat. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> when I uh, next time I'm over in Bali, we'll uh, be doing a trading session. That's for sure. Nice, nice. Happy guys. Well, um, thank you everyone for watching. We'll uh, be back in a couple of weeks with our next guest. Uh, if you've liked the video, just give us some uh, good feedback, like the video, and share it to your friends. And uh, with that, we'll see you guys in the next episode. So thank you everyone. Thank you.